about vector valued functions and now I want to look at them graphically using an online applet. This is GeoGebra. I have a link in D2L for accessing or downloading GeoGebra if you would like. We're going to create a template. First I'm going to create my parameter t. The easiest way to do that actually is to go up here into the slider menu and I'm going to click on slider and then just click on the screen. That'll create a new slider. I'm going to label it t. Notice that I can change the the, the slider values on T and when I apply and go to this arrow I can now drag this T it'll change numbers. That in itself is pretty boring. The reason why we want to do T is because we're going to create what would be a vector valued function in this applet it's actually easiest to pretend that the, we're just looking at the end points that the vector traces out. So down in the bottom in this input bar I'm going to set P to be a function of T and the one that we looked at in the video previously was sine of t comma cosine of t. I'm going to press enter. And notice that when t is close to zero, we're up here um, at the value. The sine means that the x coordinate is at zero and the y coordinate is at one. I'm going to do so. And we see that as I change the value of t, the value, the point p, moves along a path. I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to right click on this point P and put trace on. That means that now when I shift T it's going to sort of trace out the path of this. All well and good. Why is this interesting? Well I can visualize this. Think of this as a vector valued function where the vector starts at this at the origin and has endpoint P and now we're going to do some changes to P. Like, for example, what happens if I switch this function and make it the cosine of t, sine of t? Okay, um, I want to clear the screen. When you click and drag the screen, it'll clear it. And now when I move my t values, see when t starts at 0, I'm down here, and increasing my t values travels in a circle, but notice that the circle is now traveling in the opposite direction. As my t values get bigger, my P is going counterclockwise around this circle. What if I were to do other things to this? Um, I think it'd be easier. I'm going to alter this T by right-clicking and going to Object Properties. And now I'm going to let my T values just go from 0 to 2 pi. Whoops, 2 pi. I think that input will work for this. We'll see if that actually works. Yeah, it looks like that worked. Um, and I'm going to clear it and set my t back at 0. And I see that for this circle, as I go from 0 to 2 pi, I'm going to go one full revolution, which makes sense given the function that we were looking at. Let's clear our screen again. And now, what happens if instead of having cosine of t, sine of t, I have cosine of 2t, sine of 2t? I press OK. Now, as I move, I've only gone 3.1 units in t, and I've already made one revolution around the circle. That's telling me that although the path is the same, or the, although the curve in space is the same, the space curve is the same, the path is different because this path is going twice as fast. That I just went around the circle twice um, and the original function only ran around the circle once. I'm going to make one more change. Instead of having the two on the interior, what happens when I have the two on the outside of the function? I might have to put a little time symbol here so that they know that it's multiplication. I'm going to press OK going to clear the circle. And notice what happens now. Now, if I start at t equals 0, the radius of the circle has changed. So instead of having a circle of radius 1, we now have a circle of radius 2. That's all I want to show with circles. Let's move on to lines. So let's say that I have a function that looks really boring. Let's just do like 2t plus 1, and then maybe just t minus 2. Let's look at this function for a second. Notice that when t equals 0, 
our initial position is going to be at the point 1, negative 2. And as t grows, we're going to trace out this line. And the line's going to grow, and it's going to shrink. Just like before, what if I wanted to change this line so that it was moved twice as fast? To make it move twice as fast, I'm going to do just what I did before, and I'm going to replace t with 2t. And this is a boring com composition of function. It could be simplified if I wanted to, but just for the sake of clarity, if I replace t with 2t, now when I move, this is indicated by because these points are every tenth of a unit, we see that now our, our, our vector tips traced out by the point P are moving along twice as fast. Finally, I want to show one really cool thing. What happens if I were to replace this with a t squared in each case? So I'm replacing 2t with t squared. You might think that this traces out a parabola, right? Because before it was a line and now it's a parabola. And individually, each of these equations um, might look parabolic. But notice that in this case, what happens? It's going to trace out, whoops, I need to get my arrow. P traces out a line. But it's not that the the the, the graph doesn't become parabolic, what happens is that the speed of p changes. That initially those small t values squared are going to be little teeny tiny t values squared, and as t grows, that t squared value is going to spread out the distance between each tenth of a point on these lines to be further and further apart, meaning that the particle traveling along this vector valued function would travel faster and faster and faster.